The second stanza. From that which, has, which never ceases, all that ceases seems to come. Yet in ceasing, it remains that which never ceases. This is the complementarity of time and timelessness. Complementarity of the, the temporal and the atemporal. So you are the uh, complementarity of these two. Japanese philosopher uh, Kitaro Nishida, who was a friend of uh, uh, Suzuki, Daisa Suzuki, I was born in the same town. Doesn't mean anything, but I was born <laughs> in the same town. <laughs> uh, called this absolute, con absolute self identity of absolute contradiction. Ima Ho, this marvelous and wondrous fact is the mystery of all perfect Buddhas. From that which has no locus, all that is located comes. Yet in being so located, it remains that which has no locus. Non-locality right there, and locality. Again, there's a complementarity of locality and non-locality. Imaho, this marvelous and wondrous fact is the mystery of all perfect Buddhas. From that which is unobjectifiable, all that is objectifiable comes. Yet in being so objectifiable, it remains that which is unobjectifiable. So, the dichotomy between subject and object is just a ripple in the ocean of this cognitive intensity. Imaho, this marvelous and wondrous fact is the mystery of all perfect Buddhas from that which neither comes nor goes, all that comes and goes proceeds. Yet in so coming and going, it remains that which neither comes nor goes. Life is atemporal. Living and dying is a component of life that has no opposite. Life is eternal beyond time, within which the cycle of living and dying takes place. In the lower dimensional universe, lower cognitive intensity domain. Yes, please. So, <clears throat> That particular scripture came from Tibet. And having surve surveyed many uh, scientific traditions, there have been few people who are the forerunners of third enlightenment paradigm of science. Buckminster Fuller. Someday I want to give a lecture on Buckminster Fuller in this uh, conference. Buckminster Fuller. And this afternoon, my friend Dale Pond will be talking about John Keeley and a few others. You have Dr. Tiller and Walter Russell and Steiner laid the foundation philosophically based on Goethean science. So as an example of the new scientific modality based on the third enlightenment paradigm, I want to share a segment of the Russellian science. And I would like to, you, uh, Lara to read this first. The universe Seen from within is light. Seen from without by spiritual perception is thought. Knowledge is not acquired from without, but merely recollected from within. The recollection of knowledge from within is an electromagnetic process of thinking mind 
which is as exactly under man's control as is the generation of the same power to turn a wheel. Man must think in light. His thinking must be in terms of the electromagnetic periodicities which measure all motion. For such is he himself and nothing else. Omnipotence lies in perfect thinking. There is no power in this universe other than the energy of thinking mind. Thinking is the cause of motion and the periodicities or states of motion caused by thinking mind are registered in light, which man calls matter. Matter is light. Nothing is which is not light. Thank you. Steiner. Hmm? So, so no matter. No matter. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> the universe seen from within is light. So this is spirituality centered consciousness in your meditative state of mind. You do see light. And this is not light of the electric magnetic electromagnetic light which may include it light the substance of the universe the intelligence itself seen from without by spiritual perception in thought now I am going to introduce you to a sort of a mind-bending thinking We are accustomed to think in terms of their entities and entities moving, yes? And this, whatever the entity it is, if you look closely, there is again some entities moving inside and going on. Where does it end? So long as we think that the universe consists of entities, you are going to face this paradox. Even superstring theory, which could be a pure mathematical fantasy, could be, has this ring <laughs> vibrating in 10 or 11 dimensional space time. So, next question is so, what is this ring? Where did this come from? I'm telling you, a new mode of thinking. Thinking precedes matter. Motion precedes entities. It is wave. It is wave which is more primary to particles. And the medium of wave, in, in the most original sense, in the very beginning, the foundation, there is no medium either. The medium is also created from the initial thinking of the cosmic intelligence. We are used to think things move. I'm saying move things. Can you imagine that? That's what the Steiner is talking about. Thought with superconscious cognitive intensity, with excitatory intelligence. Your thought, you have never thought about that, have you? Your thought, just thought, not just your thought, but your eyes knows body is a form of thought. What we call a vacuum, which is actually plenum, is thought. There is nothing but thought. 